Hey, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another video. First off, I want to apologize for not making a lot of videos lately. <coughs> As you can tell, I've been under the weather. <coughs> so, I apologize because you don't hear a lot of coughing and clearing my throat. And in the future, I'm sure you'll hear that a lot because I might not get sick all the time, but when I do get sick, it lasts forever. <coughs> so, I apologize in advance. But also, in my free time, I've been re-watching the show, Hercules The Legendary Journeys. Now, real quickly, I'll just show this is Season 1 box set. <clears throat> What's nice about these thicker ones, A, they have special features, while the slimmer ones don't. And I'll show you a slimmer one in a bit. And two, when they open up, like they have pictures on the disc. And just a, a nicer presentation. I'm not going to unravel the rest of them. But. <clears throat> then season two, this is what I'm talking about the slimmer ones. Like those, these were like around 2003 to 2005. These were coming out. And from Anchor Bay, actually, Anchor Bay Entertainment. <clears throat> And then around 2011, they were re-releasing it as these. And granted, it saves you more space. But on the flip side, they take away the special features. And even like all the DVDs just look the same. So not as good of a presentation. It doesn't have the special features. But again, the not only do they save you space on your shelf, but these were, I remember, being cheaper. So. <clears throat> you also have season three. I would say the first three seasons are the best of the show. Then you get to season four, where there's there is stuff I like about this season, but this is also where you get some of the problems. <clears throat> season five, which some people crap on, but this is actually, this is like the season, and as well as season six, I remember the least. But rewatch it again, this was actually a welcome surprise. This was a nice bit of change of pace to be a little bit more serious, a little bit more darker. At least the first half of the season. They should have kept it for the entire season, but I thought the first half of this season was actually kind of a breath of fresh air for the series. <clears throat> and then season six. Which this is only eight episodes. It does have bonus features though, so <clears throat> I'll just show the boss just to give me some something to show. Now Hercules Legendary Journeys, for those who don't even know what the hell it is, it's a TV show. At first it was five movies. It was five TV movies in nineteen ninety-four. It was <clears throat> Well, I'll just name them off. Hercules and the Amazon Women, Hercules and the Lost Kingdom, Hercules and the Circle of Fire, Hercules and the Underworld, and Hercules and the Maze of the Minotaur. <clears throat> now, they were executive produced by Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert. Yes, the same guys who did the Evil Dead films, Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert had deals with Universal because... If you're wondering, I have a cough drop, if you wonder what that is. <clears throat> Sam Raimi directed Dark Man, that was Universal. Army of Darkness, that was Universal. Then they also produced this film, Hard Target. They also produced Time Cop, another Universal film with John Claude Van Damme starring in it. So they did a lot of stuff with Universal Studios, and hey, why not do something for TV? And you'd tell Sam Raimi and Robert Tapper they were big fans of mythology, big fans of stuff like Sinbad and Jason and the Argonauts. <clears throat> you definitely saw that in Army of Darkness. I mean, that's why Army of Darkness is more of an adventure story, an adventure tale than a horror film. And <clears throat> you know, my thoughts said, uh yeah, Army of Darkness, that's one thing. It would have been nice if that was still more of a horror film than it was. 
This is R-rated, but it's not. Doesn't really feel like an R-rated film. Because it's supposed to be PG-13, but that's a different story. And for those wondering, I have reviewed all the Evil Dead films. I enjoyed the Evil Dead trilogy. Not so much the TV series, but I enjoyed those films. But yeah, they fought skeletons in that movie, and that was an O2 back in the day. Those kind of movies where they had used stop motion at the time. And hey, why not bring Hercules to, at this point, 90, to the 90s? And the cast that got this guy, Kevin Sorbo. And Kevin Sorbo... <clears throat> Some say he didn't look the part because he wasn't too muscled up, but I thought he was still in pretty damn good shape. And most of all, he was a great actor. I, I do think he does a great job playing this character. He's a noble character. He gives his speeches. Some would say he's preachy. To me, though, it casts the right amount of morality for the tales here and involved in the series. <clears throat> As well as, he had a likable presence. He had, he was a guy who is easily approachable, easy to understand, speaking wise. And I thought he had a good charm to him as Hercules. I thought he had a good charisma to him as Hercules. It was easy to see why people would trust this character and would listen to this character and would follow this character. And I would easily say this is my favorite Hercules, my favorite version of Hercules. <clears throat> I think he does a, he's definitely one of the big reasons why I enjoy the show. And then you know, you also had Michael Hurst as his sidekick and friend Eolus. He was also a very good actor. He was likable. He had a great back and forth with Kevin Sorbo. They worked very well together. They made for a great team. Definitely one of the best parts of the series was their friendship. <clears throat> and he had quite a few characters pop up, as well as familiar faces. It's Anthony Quinn popped up as Zeus, the king of the gods, the father of Hercules. Anthony Quinn sadly only did the five movies. He was still acting. He was acting up until the 2000s. And this show ended like 1999. <clears throat> so he could have done the TV show, but I don't know if he wanted more money and they wouldn't pay him or he didn't want to do TV, even though these were made for TV, so technically it still was TV. Maybe he didn't want to do a TV series. I don't know what the deal was, but <clears throat> they should have paid him pay the man because that's one of the best parts of the first five movies is Anthea Quinn's relationship with Hercules the father-son I thought when they had scenes together they worked very well with each other and Zeus while not a perfect character meaning he had issues of his own you could tell he loved his son he cared for his son and I thought there was a nice bond between the two and again I thought both actors worked very well Plus, I like Anthony Quinn. He's a good actor. He's a talented actor. Sally missed. One of his last roles was Avenging Angelo with Sylvester Stallone, which I reviewed when I did my Stallone marathon. <coughs> but they had a, a great back and forth, and that was Sally missed on the TV show. Because then when they did the TV show, they barely showed Zeus. Like, of the, the actual six seasons, they showed him, like, one hand how many times they actually showed Zeus just like they knew they couldn't get as good as Anthony Quinn I guess they don't even get him back and just I think that character would have worked very well throughout the series and <clears throat> then the few times they showed Zeus on the series he was just a prick really kind of an unlikable prick so that was a shame that they didn't do that <clears throat> but other familiar faces as I was watching the show Tony Todd makes an appearance. Lucy Liu makes an appearance. Richard Mole, who was on the TV show Night Court, he makes an appearance as a Cyclops. Uh, Reb Brown, yes, Reb Brown has an appearance, I think, in the, the first season. 
I'm, and if you don't know who Red Brown is, if you hear screaming, Red Brown is probably around. <laughs> well, more yelling. If you're yelling, Red Brown is going to be somewhere yelling. If you watch films like Strike Commando, Robo War, uh, the 70s Captain America movies, you look at Red Brown, you'll know what I mean. <clears throat> and some younger people before they were famous, like Carl Urban. Carl Urban was on two episodes of the show, playing two different characters, which happened a lot on the show, because, like, Lucy Lawless, who would later be Xena, Warrior Princess, in the first movie, she played one of the Amazons. You know, completely different character. And then in another episode, she played another different character, which is like a wife of a centaur. Centaur is a half-man, half-horse character, so... Idea. Yeah, they did that a lot. <clears throat> Carl Urban, in one episode he played Cupid, and in another episode he played Julius Caesar. So it was cool to see Carl Urban, a young Carl Urban. Also, in I believe season five, an episode called The Academy, <clears throat> Ryan Gosling played the villain in that. A young Ryan Gosling. And then looking up info for the show, my mind was blown from this. There was a young Hercules TV show that starred Ryan Gosling. And it's on DVD for like 20 bucks. I do really, really want to pick that up sometime. Because it's like 50 episodes of a young Ryan Gosling as a young Hercules. Never knew that until I did research for this. So when I heard I'm like, my mind was fucking blown. I'm like, Ryan God, I like Ryan Gosling. He was young Hercules? Holy shit. <coughs> and, what was it? Season four, there was a young Hercules character in like four or so episodes. And you could tell they were gearing up for a spinoff. Because in the first season of Hercules, they had three episodes with this character named Xena, played by Lucy Lawless. They spun her off, and then her show became even more popular than this show. Like, her show did better in the ratings and critical-wise than Hercules. Now, granted, I haven't seen a lot of Xena. Maybe one day I'll, I'll pick her DVDs up or such, but... I, I just say, still say I'm more of a Hercules fan than a Xena fan, but... <clears throat> I don't know, maybe because she was a strong woman and that wasn't the norm at that time for TV shows. Or maybe because like her character is kind of like the Batman-Superman thing where Batman, people like Batman more because he's a darker character and you do a little bit more with morality and how dark the character can be while Hercules is more Superman. But of course with me, I, I prefer Superman over Batman. I don't dislike Batman, I like Batman, but I prefer Superman. <clears throat> so maybe that's the thing, reason I don't know but uh, they were doing spinoffs and they did a Young Hercules but I guess the actor that played him on that season 4 of that show of this show Ian Bowen I guess he didn't want to go to New Zealand because this was shot in New Zealand so like okay if you're not going to go we'll get someone else and they got Ryan Gosling so I do want to pick that DVD up sometime <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of recognizable people. Bruce Campbell from the Evil Dead films, he would appear uh, quite a few times. I just thought the show, like, <coughs> seven, eight, nine, like, seven to ten times, usually as Autolycus, the King of Thieves. <clears throat> and. It's hard to go through all the episodes because this would be like an hour long video. But season one, as well as the movies, they definitely had a little bit. It was still. It is a campy show, humor show, silly show, at times too silly. But the movies in the, the first season, I would say, is definitely a bit more of a serious show. And then by season two and three, they were loosening up a little bit. But I, I, yeah, I would say that the first three seasons are the best ones. 
I mean, after the five movies and they said, let's do a TV show, the first episode of the TV show is Hercules' wife and three kids being killed by Hera, the queen of the gods who hates Hercules. So, yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about serious, it's pretty serious. <clears throat> And like I said, like these thicker DVD sets does have features. I mean, the season one not so much as commentary on a couple stuff, but still is better than these, which have absolutely nothing on it. <clears throat> and then we got to season two, yeah, introduced to Bruce Campbell's character, the King of Thieves. <clears throat> Outcast, which is a nice take on racism. But yeah, I can't go through all the episodes. <clears throat> In one episode, he creates the, the first Olympic Games, the Olympics. And you had this one actress, Atalanta. That was the character's name. I always forget the actress's name. Was it, I think, Corina Everson? That's the woman who was in Double Impact. If you remember in Double Impact, there's a woman who is the works with the villains, and she's muscular in Double Impact, and tries to kill Van Damme at one point with her thighs. <laughs> That's Corina Everson. She was... Wasn't she like a bodybuilder? <clears throat> yeah, she was a bodybuilder. I want to get the age that on a Wikipedia. Does... I liked her. I liked her character. I wish she was in more of the show. She was only in three episodes, Sally. Yeah, Miss Olympia, six years in a row from 1984 to 1989. And yeah, she didn't get to do a lot of movies or such. She was in Double Impact, a minor role in Natural Born Killers. <clears throat> the original host of a fitness show called Body Shaping. Huh. And her own exercise show on ESPN. Didn't know that. But yeah, she was only in three episodes. But I thought she did a good job. <clears throat> and was it this? I want to check real quick. Or season three. I think. <clears throat> okay. In season two, there's an episode called The Enforcer. And it's this character that inside made all of water. That's sort of like the Terminator going after Hercules. And it's played by a martial artist named Karen Shepard. And I love the look she had, like the long black hair and black eyes. Like she was a great look as the Enforcer. I'm like, she looks more like a Terminator than that girl in Terminator 3. Like, Tara Shepard as is, should have been the Terminator. And then, in Season 3, I believe the episode was called Not Fade Away, or... Yeah. There's a new Enforcer, this time made of fire, and that one was played by Cynthia Rothrock. And so then Hercules gets the help of the old enforcer, Karen Shepard, and then you have a scene where Karen Shepard and Cynthia Rothrock have a fight. Now, granted, this is a low-budget TV show, so you're not getting... <coughs> if you're expecting a great, high-quality fight, and they're playing superpower beings, but it was cool to see like these two female martial artists, Cynthia Rothrock and Karen Shepard. I forgot they were in it. Just like I didn't, I forgot that Carl Urban and Ryan Gosling were on this show. Like Ryan Gosling in season five of the Academy, he plays a villain who's part of this group of kids that want to take over this academy that Hercules went to when he was a kid. So it was like, wow, I didn't know that. So yeah, Karen Shepard and Cynthia Rothrock had an appearance on the show. Karen Shepard two appearances. <clears throat> and like at one point, Hercules goes to Atlantis. And I think the actress there is Claudia Blatt. She was the main female actress in Farscape. T 
TV show I remember back in the day. And then you get to season four. Now, there are, by that point, there were silly episodes. They were just too silly. Like, there was a clip show in season three where it took place in, like, 1780 something, or and it took place in France, and, like, the actors, like Kevin Sorbo and such, were playing different characters and Frenchmen, and they heard about Hercules, and then it shows clips. Of course, nowadays, you wouldn't even do a clip show because there'd be no point because more of DVDs and Blu-rays and YouTube and things of that nature. But back in the day, they would have these things called clip shows because <clears throat> the only time you would get to see these shows is if they were... I think if they made 100 episodes, they would be able to be put into reruns. <clears throat> so if you're unless you were lucky enough to catch one of those... Who knows when next you see that episode with that certain clip, so they would have these things called clip shows. <coughs> Which, again, they don't really do nowadays. I think. If they do, you can feel free to let me know. And I go, why? Because you just look it up on YouTube in five minutes. <coughs> see, you did silly stuff like that, but you were really seeing it in season four. And the thing with season four, the weird thing, well, first off, the sad thing, this is around the time where <clears throat> Kevin Sorbo, he, I think he had done Call the Conqueror, because that came out in 97. And he had an aneurysm, blood clots in his shoulder. And Sally, he had like three or four strokes because of that. And I think to this day, 10% of his vision is lost. <coughs> and he had to almost learned how to walk again. It was a really bad time and a horrible time for Kevin Sorbo. This is after he did that movie and this is before, you know, going to season four and stuff. I think they shot some of season four because, like, the first half of it, you saw quite a bit of Hercules. But then in the second half, you see a lot less of him. So they had to work ways around it. Either, okay, you don't just stand here and talk. Or. <clears throat> and that's not to say there's no good episodes on this. I mean, I like the first episode where him and Bruce Campbell, they deal with this, the Jack and the Beanstalk story, and they have these creatures, practical creatures called harpies. Which were pretty much friendly gremlins. Um, and, and they were cool to see them as practical effects because a lot of times they did use CGI and it's really that bad, cheap 90 CGI, which are more lenient on it because it was a TV show. But still, I would prefer they, they do once in a while have some nice practical effects. <clears throat> like even season four, there's a part with him his buddy Olus and this woman named Nebula, which I liked her character, and she appeared a couple times after that throughout the series. She was a... I forget the actress's name, but she was really cool. They deal with this spider woman in this cave, and nice practical effect of spider woman, like the bottom half of her spider body was done practical effects. That was a good episode. That was season four. But then you would see a lot more stuff like, let's go more silly. Let's have Hercules help this girl as a dance partner. And you're like, what the fuck? Or there's a point, this, I thought this was a stupid episode where he's put on trial. Because some other guy, he died doing a good deed and this lawyers like how dare you you know encourage people and it was just I didn't understand the fucking point of the episode it's it seemed more like well we're gonna find some bullshit reason for him to be on trial because that way he doesn't fight much and <clears throat> won't have to move much <clears throat> you saw a bit more you know clip shows also more of dealing with young Hercules which, again, at this point, they had not had Ryan Gosling. They had this other guy, Ian Bowen. 
And again, I think Ian Bowen, he didn't want to move to New Zealand. So when they actually made the whole show with the 50 episodes, they got Ryan Gosling. But here is this kid named Ian Bowen. I didn't care for him as young Hercules. So, like, Hercules, his buddy, and then Jason of Jason and Argonauts, they're talking while they're fishing. And then it cuts to all this stuff with young Hercules. And they did that young Hercules thing like four times that one season. Or an episode where they change Hercules to a fucking pig and call it Portules. <sighs> or another episode where Bruce Campbell and uh, Marco Hurst as Eolus, they just point they're running away from a giant fucking chicken. And I'm like, this is, you know, I would. Season 8, it's hard to even call that a full season because it's only 8 episodes. If I had to pick a least favorite season, there's stuff I like in this, but. Like, this is the Spider Lady episode and the first episode with Bruce Campbell. Like, that's doing silly stuff fine. This one, it's a lot of jump the shark moments. I don't know, because Kevin Sorbo wasn't there, so they could get more silly, which was a mistake. <clears throat> I hear rumors, I don't know if they're true, because there's two sides to every story, that Kevin Sorbo wasn't on the best of terms with the producers, and that's why Kevin Sorbo, you see, he hasn't really come back to other stuff, like Lucy Lawless has. Well, then, she's married to Robert Tapper, one of the executive producers. Even like Michael Hurst, he's gone in direct episodes of like Ash vs. Evil Dead, but no one's called Kevin Sorbo, and some say, well, that's because they didn't get along. Like him and the producers of. I don't know if that's true, though. Although, if they're doing shit like this, and Kevin Sorbo. If I was Kevin Sorbo, I'd have blood clots, I have to almost walk again, and then I'm watching the show that I'm famous for being turned to a fucking pig and characters running from giant chickens I'd be pissed too so maybe that's why and if that's the case I don't fucking blame them I don't know if that was the case just no one's saying anything but I, w I won't part of me doesn't blame Kevin Sorbo <clears throat> but that might that might not be the case it might be completely other different stuff <clears throat> But like a lot of side characters got bumped up. Like Bruce Campbell, who's only in one episode in season two, one episode in season three, but here he's in like four or five episodes at least. <clears throat> and again, a lot of young Hercules stuff where he's sitting there talking with someone and then flashback to the young Hercules stuff. <clears throat> so season four. Is, I mean, on one hand, what do they do? But just because you don't have Ken Sorbo there doesn't mean you have to make stories about turning to fucking pigs or giant chickens or young Hercules who I don't give a fuck about. Do more stuff with the old Eolus character. Eolus character. Do more stuff with that Atalanta girl who I like. Do more stuff. You do bring the fucking. Enforcer back. So many people come back from the dead on the show anyway. <clears throat> There's a lot of other stuff you could have done than that shit. And that's probably why in season five, when Kevin Sorbo was feeling a bit better, they decided to be a little bit more dark. I think this is season five. <clears throat> And this is a show, I mean, this is a season along with season six that I did not remember much about. But at least the first half of the season was a welcome surprise. Because the first half of the season, it was a nice story being told. And season four and season five, you actually have Alex Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi working on the show. I, I don't know when they began, maybe season three or season four. But they went on to season five, they wrote episodes, and then they helped run the show at times. <clears throat> and the thing with season five, it starts with his buddy Ola's dying. 
and then a little bit of darker Hercules, which was a nice change of pace, and then dealing with different gods like Sumerian gods and um, the Nord did the Norse guard. <clears throat> God, I can't even talk right. The Norse gods like dealing with Thor and Loki and at one point I think Ireland and he went to Ireland <coughs> it was nice it was a welcome change of pace with different kinds of gods different kinds of mythology a little bit more serious storytelling it's nice to watch one after the other And then this evil character named Dayhawk, who's messing with Eolus, his buddy's body. And, like, the first half of the season was pretty cool. When I got to the second half, they were sort of going back to the silly stuff. Because... You gotta help someone put on a fashion show, and... <clears throat> then there's they dealt with this alternate parallel world and a season or two before which remind me of the Star Trek episode Mirror Mirror they return to that and it's like they kill off Eolus but then they didn't want Michael Hurst to leave so they keep so it didn't seem like he left anyway because you know, he would pop up being possessed, and then an exorcism was done. Okay, now he's he's gone. No parallel universe. There's another Eolus. He's different. Let's bring him back to our world. <clears throat> and even the, the Robert Tabard or someone admitted that it was just done to spike ratings, to increase ratings to kill him off. But even by that point, you had killed the character off like two times, so... Probably didn't work out the best as they thought they wanted. But still, even though there's a couple of silly stuff, there's some nice episodes. I mean, the first half is that sort of arc being dealt with, going to the different types of gods, and a little bit of a darker show. I appreciated the change of pace. Even after that, like you have one episode where they have to move this cart. Full, filled with explosives to this volcano because they want to blow a side of it off so that it seeps over there instead of on this village. Uh, there's another episode which was decent, which dealt with like, the Academy where Ryan Gosling's the villain. Uh, I thought that was cool. One where Teen Arthur is sent back in time by Merlin. Merlin did that because Merlin wants Hercules to teach King Arthur some humility and teach him how to be a better king. I thought that was a bit interesting. Uh, then by the end of season five, I thought they kind of rushed this idea where it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Like that could be a whole season to itself. <clears throat> and also the timeline, if you're going to this for you no know, one's going to this for realism. But the timeline is a bit weird because in season two or three, they make reference to, they don't say Jesus, but you get the idea of Jesus being born because the Olus character and two others, they follow the star, and then there's a hut. <clears throat> so... Okay, that's Jesus being born. And then in season 5, that King Arthur episode, they say it's like 500 AD. And now we're going to go back a thousand years. I'm like, 500 AD after death, a thousand years, even though Jesus has already been born like season 2 or 3. <clears throat> See what I mean? Like, this. And then, like, Julius Caesar, like, 
what time frame was he around? And you heard if if you if you try to do that, man. Which Julius Caesar appears in this season too, season five. So it's a lot of cool. It is a lot of cool stuff this season. Just once in a while, I got into the silly bits of season four, but for the most part, I thought it was pretty well done. Again, I think the the last episode of that season felt a bit rushed. And then season six, only eight episodes. I guess when it got to the end of season five, Ken Sorbo was being talked into doing three more seasons of the show. And Kevin Sorbo says, no, nah, because he thought, well, we've already told enough stories that we could, and plus he was offered Andromeda, and then I guess, okay, fine, you don't want to do it, let's do eight episodes. And he's like, okay, and then the final eight episodes, which <clears throat> you would think if you had only eight episodes left, each episode would, like, really build up to something but not really it's still kind of just standalone episodes and then the last episode oh yeah it's the end by the way <laughs> granted at least they don't kill the character off at least you do have Hercules and his buddy walking off into the distance for whatever adventures they seek out there at least there's that It's just, it does feel a little bit anticlimactic. Probably not so much as Xena, because I, what I've heard of Xena is that Xena dies at the end of her show. But I think she's still around as a spirit. And then Gabrielle becomes the new warrior princess, something like that. So I, I would definitely say I prefer this over that. So it could be worse. But I think knowing that they had eight episodes left, they could have done a lot more build up, a lot more finessing. Dot in the eyes, crossing the T's. Right to be honest, if I would say do one or two movies, whether a feature length movie or a made for TV, since that's how it started, I would say do one or two movies, include all the characters you can. That's why I say two movies, because you might not be able to fit them all in one, but do two movies. You fit, you know, the Salmonius character, which he appeared in a lot of it. Not so much the last two seasons, really enough, but mainly the first four or so he I think he appeared like one or two episodes in season five I can't remember him appearing in season six but he was like a guy who always wanted the quick deal the quick money best way to make the most money I think the actor's name was Robert Trevor he did a great job but at the end of Concerning other finales, there's much worse, so overall, I'm fine with the finale, because, again, you didn't kill the character off, him and his buddy go off to the distance, and you can think for yourself what happens to those characters next. It's not a downbeat ending, it's not a what-the-fuck ending. It just, when you're watching these on the marathon, it just feels a bit anticlimactic, is all. But, again, there's a lot worse. A lot worse finales. Like X Files. With the stupid retcon bullshit they did with the new season 11 or 10, whatever the fuck. 10 11. Retcon bullshit. That's bullshit. Like, so this isn't so much bullshit. But yeah, with six seasons of the show, entertaining show, fun show. Quite a few fight sequences, definitely loaded with action. At times they get a bit silly and campy quite a few times, but at the, it still had a nice fun sense of humor to it. It still had a nice, it was, there's serious moments, there's a lot of lighthearted moments. It was a good adventure, it was a fun re-watching this again. And... He did a really good job as this character. And overall, I mean, I don't really have a list of favorite episodes that's hard for me to do. 
because how do one outweigh the other? Overall, I do enjoy the show. As season four kind of went a bit downhill, and then season five went back up, and then season six is kind of like eh. Almost like eight random episodes. Here you go. But anyway. It would have been nice if the show ended stronger, but at least it didn't end in a, a bullshit way. I'm repeating myself now, so I'll stop. It was fun rewatching the show. Hope you guys were okay with me coughing. Again, these, these coughs usually last a long time for me, so in the future I'm sure there'll be a lot more coughing. I apologize. By the way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.